from Photonics Media, this is the podcast that takes listeners inside the physical science of light. As we explore groundbreaking and industry-shaping progress in lasers, optics, imaging, metrology, and sensing. Each episode, our hosts welcome optics and photonics luminaries, rising stars, and market leaders for robust discussion about the trends shaping the field of photonics. From research and development to commercial innovation, we're on the air for unparalleled insight, offered on All Things Photonics. All Things Photonics is brought to you by PolyScience and LumenCore. Today's episode is brought to you by PolyScience. For over 60 years, the PolyScience line of award-winning temperature control equipment has been helping the photonics industry reach its goals safely and efficiently. Our products are made in America and delivered globally. Please visit polyscience.com to learn how we can help you. Changing the world of chillers is more than a tagline. It's part of our history. Today's episode is also brought to you by LumenCore. LumenCore excels in the manufacture of technical lighting, scanners and imagers, and metrology. Visit us at LumenCore.com to see how we can best support your new products and OEM production. It rolled out literally on wheels from the comforts of New Jersey to destinations that at once dotted the photonics value chain in the North American landscape. Its quest, though not yet wholly solidified, was, and remains, ambitious. Make photonics accessible. And do it literally on wheels. Such begins the story of Thor Lab's mobile photonics lab experience in calendar year 2023. As summer gave way to fall, the company's inaugural mobile lab experience embarked on a cross-continent endeavor, visiting schools and laboratories, and providing hands-on trainings that served both to introduce optics and photonics to the interested masses, as well as to promote experiential learning in the innumerable technology areas that optics and photonics envelope. Collimating light sources and polarization measurements informed these early visits and debutante photonics trainings. From New Jersey to western New York, the mid-Atlantic, and the west coast, the mobile lab traversed the country late last year. Just like photonics innovation never sleeps, neither does the Thor Labs team behind the rollout and success of the Mobile Photonics Lab. By the time the Mobile Lab parked itself, still on wheels, in the exhibition hall at Photonics West last month, it had become a bona fide industry resource. The stories about bringing optical tables on the road and parking them at institutions of higher learning abounded. So did other stories about navigating Boston's narrow streets and optics without air conditioning. The brain power behind the mobile lab joins us today on all things photonics. Michael Mohammadi, who steered the mobile lab from concept to reality, and Bill Warger, who is carrying the mobile lab into the photonics mainstream through targeted curricula and trainings, shed light on the present and future of this one-of-a-kind industry resource. What the mobile lab is exactly, its role in workforce development initiatives, and Thorlab's commitment to the industry, as evidenced by the mobile lab, are up next. So I, I think before we, we tell the story that we're going to tell today, we have to sort of set the stage. And part of what we're talking about begins with this understanding that Thor Labs is doing something that really hasn't been done before. Um, but it's not just a photonics bus that we're talking about. It's, it's, an, it's an experience, right? Photonics lab experience, mobile photonics lab experience, not one and the same. Got to ask you to describe what exactly it is we're talking about. And we'll start with you, Michael. Well, it's definitely not a bus. Um, we, we did look at buses, though, and they're quite expensive, and it was even harder to get a driver. Um, what it is is a 30-foot customized trailer that we pull behind uh, you know, a Ram 3500 dually, and the trailer is outfitted with two optical tables, so large eight-foot, six-foot, eight-foot optical tables, um, and we drive it around the country, and we give demonstrations to students all ages, kids from you know four and five all the way up to we've had retired people come through that said wow this is cool um and we just drive it around and we show how 
light works. And we have a variety of demos that do that that Bill will probably go into later in our chat. Conceptualization of this resource, this tool did not happen overnight in, in the construction, though it was speedy, also didn't happen overnight. Um, in fact, it was Alex Cable's brainchild for many years, as I understand it. Um, but there were some unique logistical challenges that um, you knew were going to emerge and then some others that maybe you didn't have um, in anticipation that emerged after the fact. What happened for Thor Labs, though, or in the broader photonics community, maybe to move this idea towards reality in the last year? Yeah, you're right, Jake. So this was definitely a uh, passion and an idea Alex has had for uh, at least 15 years, if not longer. What he wanted to do was create ways to allow our customers to interact with our products and our brand um, by bringing it to them. And we all know many companies have similar initiatives where they fit, fill out buses or other large vehicles and drive it around and do product demos. But Alex's vision was a little bit different. Uh, in the last year, year and a half, um, we had thought about our customers coming out of the pandemic People wanted connection again, right? We were all so used to this. We're on Zoom or Teams right now, right? And, and we're all used to that and that's great. But to really learn a field like photonics and optics, you've got to get your hands on, on the technology, on the products. You have to see the demos. So anyone can show a video of how a laser works. But to get into a lab and actually see how a laser is deconstructed and it works, that's impactful. So, um, you know, late 2022, we were having these conversations around how do we create in-person immersive experiences for students um, that goes alongside our other initiatives around workforce development, connecting more with our employees, student outreach. Uh, and that's what kind of brought this plan back to the table. Um, the reason we had never done it, honestly, it's pretty hard to do. Um, it, it's a logistical nightmare. It's very costly. Um, and it really takes the right combination of uh, talent on the on the education side. So you need a great leader who's going to create the content. You need someone who's visionary, who's going to put the idea together and you need someone to operate it. And that's really what happened in the end of 2022. Alex came to me um, and said, look, I've wanted this thing for so long. Let's just do it. Uh, and he offered me an intern, which ended up being one of the three reasons this thing has been successful. We got an outstanding guy in Noah Shaw. Noah came on board as an intern and, and really took the product, um, the project and ran it through, um, you know, from helping scope out the vehicle, the trailer, the battery system, the solar system, um, all the legal requirements, regulatory requirements. But at the same time, we also had something really cool going on that Bill Warger, you know, he's he's been in our company for a long time in, in product development. He's taught tech support labs. Um, and he was really one of the final steps to the, the release of every product we've released in the last 10 years or so. But Bill was getting more and more interested in photonics education. And so the, this weird thing happened where I was driving for this in-person customer experience. Bill separately was driving for how do we do more photonics education initiatives. And then we got this great intern. And once we put that all together, it, I mean, things just really took off. Yeah, the, the best and, and perhaps also the most fearful words from a boss, let's do it. Um, and I know that is a big part of what you do, Michael, at Thor Labs. Um, but you hit on a couple of interesting points here. One of them is that there's this balance that you're striking between education and also getting product to customers. Um, the Photonics Mobile Lab experience sort of had a coming out party at Photonics West, which as we speak was less than a month ago. And that was the first chance for many to, to see the resource in action. But you're bringing together not just one, but two elements. How do those work together? Education, but also showing product to customers. Because you're doing this in a way that isn't just, you know, forceful selling either. Well, I'm going to let Bill take that. But, but at first, I'm going to mention that I'm, you know, I'm a sales leader at Thor Labs. So it was interesting, you know, it's interesting for me and, and really fun to take on an initiative that is purely non-sales focused. And Bill can tell us all about um, how that works. Right. And I have not been sales my entire time at Thor Labs. So it's been a it's a good dichotomy of balancing each other out. But yeah, we started off with that, you know, let's get access to the parts, you know, so people get that experience and hands-on feedback from the parts that they wouldn't really get to experience otherwise. And so, yeah, from a sales side, you know, it was made by a for-profit company. And if somebody's interested in something, you know, we'll definitely make that connection with the right people and they can have that discussion outside of the mobile lab. 
But otherwise, it's really about strengthening the photonics community, you know, not just Thor Labs, so all the photonics companies overall. You know, how do we get people interested in photonics? How do we get them knowledgeable about using the products and the parts and really developing new things? So this is an interesting question to, to pose to you, Bill, as someone who's been involved heavily in product development. Workforce and your interest in workforce, how did that emerge from you? And I'm curious specifically if there were any trends or an absence of trends that you perceived that led you to think that this resource was the right deliverable at the right time. So it ended up being a combination of things. We didn't initially say, let's go, you know, try to drum up workforce. You know, it was really that access to the parts. You know, we our first visit was at you know Sussex County Community College, where we've been you know collaborating with them to try to help develop you know both the optics machining and you know metal machining programs. And then our second stop was at Stevens, was where I went to as an undergrad. And from a personal experience, having not known what photonics was, you know, I met with my advisor who, you know, it was just a random conversation that we had that got me hooked onto photonics. And 20 years later, he's still having those same random conversations with people, trying to get them, you know, interested in their program, interested into the field. And that's where it started to roll, um, you know, say, hey, maybe we can really make an impact on the for workforce development. And oh, sorry, Bill, go ahead. Well, and so it just so happens that our next stop after that was up in Rochester with Alexis Vogt, who's been the strongest advocate for workforce development. And so those three visits combined, the, right off the bat, you know, we said, OK, yeah, let's really concentrate on workforce development in addition to all these things to really help the community. Just wanted to mention that this is, of course, not Thor Labs uh, debut foray into workforce development, especially not in your home state of New Jersey, nor Rochester, SCCC and, and Stevens, and, and especially with the JML Optical Acquisition, Rochester, Thor Labs heavily involved in those communities, um, but now others with the Mobile Lab. And I think anyone who's tracked the, the so-called maiden voyage of the Mobile Lab in 2023 might be able to anticipate some of the challenges. You mentioned logistical challenges that uh, such a tool um, may impart on those responsible for it. Curious if you can go into detail on some of those though, just the the, the challenges of, of bringing the, the work to the people, but also just, you know, moving around the country with this trailer that is full of optical tables and other uh, optics and photonics equipment. Yeah, no, I mean, it's getting the people there, right? It's, you know, we can't just show up with one person with a, a truck full of equipment, right? We need people there to to guide the students through and to make sure that they're, they're getting something out of all the different experiences that we're providing. So part of it is getting people there. Part of it is, you know, what's happening in the environment, right? We've had some very hot days in the summer where the air conditioning was maybe adequate. Uh, we've had some cold days in the fall where it was below freezing uh, in October, um, which was a bit of a surprise. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of those, you know, logistics, getting the, the people, getting the environment, and then making sure everything continues to work and is still operational as we make all these different stops along the way. And, and I would just add, Bill, you know, remember the first few months before we even launched this thing, how many times did our amazing facilities team take optical tables in and out of the trailer, right? <laughs> yep. Making these, these tables are heavy. We had to make All it right. road safe. Um, also, Jake, we had a lot of issues with universities committing because they were excited, but then their campus police or security saying, look, we actually don't have somewhere safe for you to park it. So these are some of the other issues we face is it's not the lack of excitement or, you know, it's not, it's pretty easy to put optical mounts and a laser in a trailer. But, you know, it's there's a hundred other things that we've had to overcome along the way. And and Bill, but especially Noah, has done just an incredible job making sure that we're doing this and we're doing it safe and we're doing it uh, legally and also that it's kind of fun along the way. And the reception has been great from what I can tell. And this is just based solely off of the Photonics West experience. The, the whole of the community was really sort of thrilled to see this resource that I think I think members of the community had been sort of envisioning bits and pieces of what this resource does, but not necessarily as a cohesive whole. And so the response at Photonics West was exceptional. What has the response been from the um, optics and photonics community and, and maybe the general public too, assuming that you are able to now get this onto university campuses and to research centers and the, all the relevant places? 
Yeah, I mean, the, the feedback has been phenomenal. I mean, everybody's, you know, so excited. You know, it, some people are skeptical coming up to it, wondering, if, oh, okay, are we taking blood? Are we selling food? But, you know, once they realize what it is and that they get to experience some of these technologies that they've heard about but haven't really seen, you know, they come out with smiles. And, you know, one of my favorites was we had a six-year-old boy who, you know, came out of the trailer and was like, it's real. You know, I saw it on YouTube. They said it was fake, but it's real. I saw it. And just making that connection for him was just huge and so rewarding. Um, you know, the academic programs in general, they love it. They love that we're creating awareness about the programs. You know, they're, you know, a lot of the photonics programs are kind of hidden, you know, within the different academic programs. You know, everybody knows what an electrical engineer does and a mechanical engineer does, but, you know, try to find somebody that knows what quantum optics is or, you know, that you, the optics program is actually in the physics department. You know, no, people just don't know where to look. So helping the, the community understand where the academic programs are for the people that are really interested and just don't know how to get there. And even, you know, you mentioned Photonics West, the companies that have been reaching out and looking to collaborate, is, it's just been phenomenal. I mean, I just really never expected to have, you know, these conversations with these CEOs of companies saying, hey, you know, how can we get involved and how can we help out? I want to keep it on the theme of expectations. You know, this is the the very beginning of something that is is forecast to to endure for a long time. And I think there's a big piece of this, and I'm not trying to put words or ideas in your mouth, but it's sort of figuring out as we go. There's certainly some there there, so to speak. But what what comes next for the for the mobile lab, and has it met the expectations that Thor Labs had for this resource? Well, you've revealed our strategy, Jake. It's uh, fly by the seat of our pants. Yeah. Have some fun. <laughs> and really listen to the community. Um, that last piece, the last two pieces obviously being most important. Um, you know, our, our, and Bill can talk more about the, the strategy around the content and the education, but for the mobile lab, it's listening to the different types of communities where we can provide the most value that have the most need. Um, so we actually have a big strategy planning uh, uh, session next week where we're looking at what are the most underrepresented communities in photonics, where are those universities and how can we reach out to them? So we've talked about like HBCUs, for instance. Um, and, and so we, we, but we want to drive this initiative by listening to the community. So we're really thankful for being on the podcast. We're hoping people that hear this say, well, you know, there's a community I've, I'm thinking of that doesn't get a lot of attention from the optics of photonic space. That's where we want to show up. You know, we want to take our brand everywhere and we want to go to the big, big universities and do the fun stuff. But we also want to have a, a major impact. So um, a big part of our strategy is our is our corporate hungry for your thoughts, which you'd see on our website. Um, that That's currently how we're going to drive this thing forward. Pun very heavily intended. Very heavily intended. Yeah, very good. <laughs> uh, I, I One of the things about the optics and photonics and the imaging sector, too, that that is fascinating and a little bit distinguishing is that there's this essence of regionalism, right? We have these different clusters. You've got the Rochester cluster, the Orlando cluster, Tucson, others. Um, and now you're able to to be in all of those, often, you know, in short uh, time frames for as long as you want. It, has that emerged as, as a theme for, for the mobile labs team here? Because these are, yes, optics and photonics themes that you're, you're going to be enveloping, but they're, you know, there's some nuance there. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely trying to, you know, hit a lot of these major clusters to to learn as much as we can, right? So from the Rochester standpoint and the workforce and the optics manufacturing, you know, we talked about how that's really influenced us. You know, in April, we'll be in Colorado talking to a lot of the, the quantum cluster out there and seeing what are their pain points, you know, what what could we do to really help and, and drive those clusters forward? And, you know, what we're seeing is a lot of the pain points are really consistent across them, right? It's, it's struggles getting the students enrolled. It's uncertainty, unknown job market for the general public. Uh, it's difficult replacing a lot of the champions of these continuing longstanding programs. You know, there, we, there's so many good programs that have been going on. Uh, but once that one person who is really leading it, you know, drops out, does something else, you know, who's taking the reins and continuing them? Um, so making more continuity and things along those lines. I think also with with the optics and photonics workforce, sort of your your view of, of the industry varies depending on where you are on the photonics value chain. And 
And that's a question that or, or uh, sort of a comment, I guess, that applies here, I think. And I want to ask you how the mobile lab supports and enhances that perspective because photonics is broad, right? But there's something here for everyone. There is, you know, and that's you know, why our first introduction to photonics, we try to just introduce those technology areas to everybody, um, making sure that there's some realization of how photonics is, you know, impacting them on a, a daily basis. But then as we're going out and we're talking to people, trying to understand what made them excited about the field, what would help, you know, other people in their shoes now get excited and want to join the field. And so what can we add to really make that personal connection with these different groups? I want to go back just a little bit and as, as you're, you're conceptualizing what the mobile photonics lab experience is going to be and what it can offer. You have to be doing this with some of the the insights from the Alexis votes of the world in mind. And I have to imagine the feedback from those figures in the photonics landscape has been very positive. How much of, of, of what was lacking did you aim to address right away with the mobile lab? So I think Alexis was the first person I spoke to outside of Thor Labs about the initiative. Um, I actually went up to Rochester and met with her and we had we sat down at a coffee shop and she was so excited and in, in, in it right away. Um, but, you know, as far as taking what we were going to do and making that something that was completely new and novel and how does that fit in with, you know, MCC and workforce development. Um, it's really gone. Can we start the question over? Sorry, Jake. Yeah. Yeah. There's a piece of this when you're, you're architecting something like the photonics mobile lab experience that requires you to sort of draw insight from from luminary figures, not just in in all of optics and photonics, but workforce especially. And Alexis Vote is one of those figures, and I know she's been involved, um, if if only from the sidelines, but but very prominently too. And I know that you, Michael, had some discussions with her. Um, what wisdom did she shed that helped sort of build this thing from idea to reality? Yeah, and Alexis was so great in the beginning in, beginning when we first shared the the concept with her um, long before we launched it. I think what I took away from uh, from her was we needed a strong leader for this. I, you know, and I'm I'm not putting these words in her mouth mouth. From our perspective at Thor Labs, seeing what she's done at MCC, it's because of who she is and how she executes. Um, so we needed that, and I think that so you know back to how why this thing's been successful. Once Bill Warger moved into his new role, which is really focused on photonics education, that gave us an exceptional leader internally, and then it's just again, connecting with as many people we can in the community and listening to what the needs of the community are. And I think Bill's been out there doing a lot of that. I, I tend to try to do a lot of that. Um, and we've got a lot of people at Thor Labs, guys like Paul Malone, who I know is on the podcast, um, you know, Jen Cable, who's very connected within the community, serves on a lot of boards. They're all antenna for ideas and needs of our community, and they're all driving and helping us move this vision forward. How will success for the mobile lab ultimately be gauged as you think of near, medium, and long-term endeavors that are planned? So right now, we're just measuring it by number of students we connect with. Um, we, we actually don't capture a lot of demographics on the students because we want this to be more of an educational initiative and, and an outreach initiative. We don't put students' names in our CRM. We're not capturing are they a current customer or not. So none of that is uh, has anything to do with how we're measuring success today. It's it's really how many students are we impacting? How many T-shirts and lab snacks we're giving out? We know that's a good indicator of success. Uh, but we're going to move to impact, right? When I think of impact, you know, we just talked about Alexis. She told Bill and I at Photonics West, she had a student this semester for, that came to her that said, you know, I was walking to class one day. I saw this weird lab thing. I went over, and that's how I learned about your program. And now I'm in the program. We also have uh, one of our entities, or, or um, one of our um, one of our entities in in Michigan, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, is called Ultra Fast Optoelectronics, or UFO. Um, Giannis, the guy who runs that, grabbed me at Photonics West and said, "Hey, by the way, a candidate we just interviewed for an engineering role saw the mobile lab in Boston. Didn't even know about Thor Labs. So we're we're slowly starting to measure impact by just that type of feedback." Um, but really, it's, it, you know, we, we haven't established KPIs other than students reached, 
number of students that register for courses, and then getting that feedback as far as recruiting numbers or hearing from the community. Um, one key piece of feedback we'd like to continue hearing are from the industry, other in, uh, companies in our industry. Um, you know, this is, uh, we're doing this initiative not just to raise awareness of Thor Labs, but to raise the field of photonics. We're very open to collaborating with people that may be perceived as our competitors. I actually was just, Bill and I bought a lot of copies of Corey Boone, who's, you know, a technical marketing manager at Edmund Optics. We bought a bunch of his Larry the Laser books and we're gonna be giving them out in the mobile lab. <laughs> so we're also gonna be measuring our impact by hearing from other companies in our industry, even our competitors who say, you know, yeah, this is working. It's, it, you know, people are coming to us for jobs that were going into electrical engineering and semiconductor before. So those are some of the things that I see. I don't know, Bill, if you want to, want to add anything I may have missed. Yeah, I mean, it's really that the, the establishment of that network, you know, can we really create that you know, support system for people that are considering you know, a role in photonics, but giving them the confidence to say, yeah, this is what I want to do. And they can sit there at the kitchen table with their parents or grandparents and they can understand, yeah, no, you're really going to make an impact you know, going into this career. So that development of that network and seeing that really solidify across the entire industry is really what I'm hoping to look for. And Bill, by nature of, or the nature of your role, you are really prominently involved in workforce and sort of on the cutting end of trends and development in that area specifically. Um, but that is a highly collaborative thing and you're doing it from a single company's perspective. Can you forecast the, the future of collaboration just in terms of photonics workforce? Because I suspect that it's going to be at least in part industry led rather than research and development led. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of us getting together. You know, we've we've had groups that are starting to have those conversations, you know, especially with the, the Sussex County Community College program, you know, getting the local industries together and understanding what are the needs from the different perspectives, not just our own, and ensuring that they're all contributing, you know, to make sure that it's going to make that impactful program. And so, you know, creating that you know structure and getting all the groups to talk together you know we had a panel discussion you know at photonics west this year um you know that's possibly just the start right maybe we can expand upon that you know have a few more presentations for what do the companies really need to see from these academic programs to to help drive that workforce development in 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 that spirit we'll end with this it's been uh, over a year now, so there has to be some. What advice or, or lessons learned can you share with those in pursuit of developing a better or more innovative photonics educational model? I think the first piece is making sure that we're incorporating some kind of hands-on piece, right? There's so much virtual digital content out there. You can hear somebody lecture and speak about any topic, uh, but there's very few opportunities for somebody to actually touch the parts, work with the parts, receive the feedback of how to actually do something with them. So that's really you know, the biggest piece I think that would need to be incorporated. Um, but also let's look at a lot of the programs that are already established. You know, so much good work is happening in these local areas that you know, we can then generalize and bring up to these you know, national and global stages just by you know, incorporating them into a lot of the efforts that are ongoing. And, well, and just go ahead, Mike. Just, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Just to add there, Jake. Um, from my perspective, it's if you've got a fun, unique idea as a company, just go try it. Right. We we all worry about KPIs and metrics and leads and all these things, but there's so much we need to do as our industry grows to make sure we're staffing our industry, we're educating our industry. So I think just go out there, find some ways to connect with students, and just try new fun things. I think that would be my advice. Well, the brain power between Thor Labs, Mobile Photonics Lab experience. Appreciate your insights. Congratulations on all the success so far. Um, the best is yet to come. Have a great uh, 2024, and thanks so much for speaking with us here. Thank you. Really appreciate it. With that, we conclude another episode of All Things Photonics. Thank you to our sponsors, to the technical staff behind the scenes, and to continued support from the Photonics Media Editorial Team. As always, questions, comments, thoughts, and ideas are welcome. Let us know how we're doing via email at allthings at photonics.com. 
All Things Photonics is available on all major platforms and on our website, photonics.com.